Ah, it's going to be a toasty day. Welcome everyone to another episode of Bryside. Today I am in Belitho Gardens, just to the west of Penzance, because I am going to be walking west into Newlyn to check it out. I've lived here all my life. I know Newlyn quite well, but I've never really documented it to put on YouTube. So this video is probably for people who are less familiar with uh, Newlyn. I'm going to stay hydrated today. It's already 73 degrees and it's nine o'clock in the morning. So this is unusually warm. Uh, for Cornwall, but the country is going through a little bit of a heat wave at the minute. I think particularly up in England they're uh, struggling a little bit in, inland. I think they're, you know, the temperatures are creeping up toward 100, which is highly uncomfortable, particularly for this country where we don't do much in the way of air conditioning, so you can't really escape it. But I digress. Plenty of fluid. I'm going to take my time and um, we'll see what we can see. So. Let's go check it out. This really is a nice little spot on the west of Penzance. It's kind of nestled in between Penzance, or like the promenade, and Newling Green. I do like it. The kids like uh, running around in here. Nice little spots to sit down and take the load off. And there's some information here. You know I like my information placards. Making space for nature. A lizard, a common lizard. Wow, look at that. So just some of the things you might uh, see here in Blytho Gardens. What a beautiful view that is. Look at that. So we've got Newlyn over there and over to the east left of where I'm standing is Penzance and the promenade. Look at the sea. Beautiful. And here we are on Newlyn Green. Really smell that sea air. What seaweed there on the rocky beach here opposite Newling Green. Smells lovely. Good to know. Just entering Newlyn now, you've got the Newlyn Gallery there with a little cafe. I've never actually had a beverage in that cafe, I wonder what it's like. Oh, nice little terrace of houses. All right. And we're right there by the fisherman statue. Just reading a little bit of information online about the fisherman statue here at uh, Newlyn. It says the bronze statue of a fisherman on the edge of Newlyn Green with Penzance in the distance. The statue shows a fisherman casting his line as the boat arrives in port. It was built to honour dead fishermen, with over 20 local men having died fishing since 1980. Money was raised for the statue locally, and the life-size bronze casting was made by local sculptor Tom Leeper. There's no date. I can't find a date when it was put there. I'd say it's, I'd say it's been there a good decade. It's been there a little while now, maybe a little bit longer. Okay, I've just found the date 2007, so that's more than a decade. That's what, uh, that's 15 years he's been looking out to sea. 2007. There we go. Right, we're just going to walk through the uh, car park here, which is by the Tolkarn pub. Got some nice cottages here on the right-hand side. I assume they would have been fishing cottages back in the day. And there is the Tolkarn Inn. It's been there a long, long time. I don't know, um, I can't see like a date stamp anywhere. I don't know how long it's been there, but it's certainly been there a year or two. If you know, let me know in the comments. Right, before I head in that direction over the bridge and into Newlyn proper, I'm just going to skirt this way um, just to show you guys the Newlyn Meadery because uh, I love it in there. I have to be a bit cautious here when we cross, like any road I guess, but it does get quite busy here. Okay, we made it over the little bridge here. We'll have a little look up Newling Coombe. There is the Newling Meadery. Used to be a uh, cinema back in the day. 
It's been a metery since the 1960s. I want to say the 1960s, I believe the 1960s. Uh, but prior to that, it was the Gaiety Cinema here at Newlin. No longer a cinema, however. Because now it cooks delicious food. If you like, you know, deep fried chicken and chips. And just up the ways a little bit from the Newlin Meadery is the Newlin Cinema, which is a new incarnation of a cinema here in Newlin. It's been here a few years, I don't know, I don't know, a decade? Something like that. Let's head back down into the sort of central area of Newlin. Right, so there you can access Porth Curnow, eight miles away, Lamorna four miles, Paul one and a quarter miles up here, but I ain't walking up that hill because uh, <laughs> it is particularly steep. Right, let's... He's gonna cross the road. Right, let's go. Busy town, Newlin. It's a nice little shot of the Newlin War Memorial. I've just procured a pasty from Warren's. I haven't had a Warren's pasty for a while. They've been making pasties since 1860. I don't think they're as good as they used to be. Let me know in the comments if you like Warren's. I consider them an emergency pasty. If I need a pasty and there's nowhere else to get one, I think, well, well, I suppose I could have popped into Lenterns. They might do them. But anyway, I've ended up with a Warren's. This historical marker here on the side of the Ship Institute here, just uh, by the North Pier in Newlin. This is interesting, to honour Captain Richard Nichols and the epic voyage of the Lugger Mystery, which sailed on, uh, from, which sailed from this harbour on the 18th of November 1854 and arrived at Melbourne, Australia 116 days later on the 14th of March 1855. The length of that lugger was 36 feet, beam 11 feet, I think that says, draft 6 feet, and tonnage 16, 16 tons. That's a long way to travel in a little titchy lugger. There's another little plaque under it as well. The electric light in this building was installed in 1930 in grateful remembrance of Miss Nora Belitho of Lurigan Penzance, who built the Institute in 1911 and until her death in 1929 ever sought the welfare of all fishermen sailing out of Newlin. I think a kid has just uh, abandoned his or her vehicle on the uh, double yellows, that's not good parking. There's another ornate plaque up here, a national mission to deep sea fishermen the Ship Institute, built by Nora Belitho in loving memory of her sister Mary H. Foster, A.D. 1911. There we go. And looking at the Institute, right opposite, is where the War Memorial is here in Newlin. To remember those that paid the ultimate price. walking toward the North Pier now. Access down there is obviously restricted for uh, fishermen and the like, workers, etc. So, let's head back in this direction. Okay, you've got your co-op. Right next door to that is the Swordfish. And the China Garden, Chinese and English hot meals to take away. And coming away from where the Swordfish is, come across the star in here. I don't think I've ever been in the star in. I think, no, I don't know. Yeah, I must have at some point, but I don't remember it. Well, Hawaiian girl there dancing, Mr. Trump. Then over on the other side of the road is the fish markets. If you want to buy some freshly caught fish, 
There's the shop to get it because it's right opposite the market. Now, New Lynn is a busy town. It's a busy port still. I'm, I think I'm right in saying that New Lynn is one of the biggest fishing ports in the entire UK. So, always, always busy here. And on the harbour. Someone's got their washing out on the line, just taking advantage of the uh, sun. Because it's hardly a cloud in the sky. In fact, there is no, there are no clouds in the sky. There's a couple of very high level clouds up there. I think what I find about New Lynn is although it is an active port and a very busy town, it is still quite quaint. Look at some of these old buildings. Now, lots of the buildings and courts here were cleared and demolished back in the 1930s as part of the government's sort of um, anti-slum policy. Now, there are a couple of these courts and lots of these old cottages left because the uh, government programme was stopped because of uh, World War II. There's some more fishmongers along this uh, street. I just dashed across the road to get a better view of Stevenson. Another uh, fishmongers. So again, if you want your fresh fish, come on down to Newlyn because <laughs> you can't get much fresher. Very cool. This is just open. I assume it's all part of Stevenson's. Just a uh, big old open door there. I've just put the camera in. There's some more fresh fish here that you can get from Chelawney's. Very nice, very tasty. Oh, I like the wall, still fish on the wall. That's very cool. All right, nice one. That is a lot of fish for sale. I wonder if they've got schnook. It's a dad's army reference here, if you know your dad's army. The pavement there ends. Let's just nip across the road. I'm not going to go too far down here because again it is a working port. There's nothing to say I can't uh, walk down this little slip though, so... No dogs on the harbour at any time. Good job I haven't got a dog with me. Oh look, uh, a uh, crab shell. The harbour is full of boats. And we'll walk up onto the cliff and get that better view. Wow! <laughs> you know, I just walked past that old Ford tractor and uh, never noticed it. Look at it, that's, uh, that's seen better days. I assume it's no longer active, but who knows? All right. Made it. So this is an awesome view. Looking down onto Newlyn Harbour. The fishing fleet is in. You can see Penzance in the distance over there. And the promenade. Queen's Hotel, you can see all those landmarks over there. You can see the Jubilee Pool. You've got the Penley lifeboat down there, which is now here in Newlyn. Used to be over on Penley Point, but the uh, station closed oh, a few years ago now. And there we are looking back up towards Mount Misery, Olverton, that sort of area. There we go, back down onto the uh, street that I walked up. Again, some lovely old houses here. We could do a little uh, bit of paint. I think they uh, need a bit of a refurbishment. Because actually, if they were done up, they would be lovely.
one last little sweep across the harbour. Now what I'm going to try and do is walk down to that pier, that's the old pier, the Newlyn Pier, which um, I want to say like was built in the 1200s. So we're kind of thinking, you know, it's a good sort of 800 plus years old. Let's have a little look down here. Like kayaks or whatever, chained up to the guardrail. Nearly stumbled then. Nearly stumbled down a hole! Oh, look at this chain. Look how old that chain is. Whoa, I nearly slipped then on that uh, slippery stuff. That would have been fun. Look at that chain. How old? How old is that? Must be, well, look how rusted out it is. That's seen a year or two. The room of a view. All right, let's head back up, avoiding the hole that I almost fold, fell down. Boisterous Newlin fisherman down there. Having a bit of a set to. All right, back up onto the main road. The Red Lion Pub. Now I have been in there, but not for a long time. sign there on that gate that says the Cliff Manor House. Quite an impressive building. There's another old information placard here. It says Newlyn and America with a picture of a boat in between it. Just says in grateful recognition of the research of Bill Best Harris, world leading expert and custodian of Plymouth's historic archives who discovered that the Mayflower docked here for fresh water and cargo adjustments, making Newlyn Old Key the very last stop and final departure point before it set sail for America. In honour of Cornwall, the county they set sail from, it is a fact that they named their first arrival point in America Truro. I didn't know that. I assumed it was Plymouth, Massachusetts. Well, how about that? Right, let's head down to the Old Key. So isn't that awesome? to think that along the old quay in like what, early 16 something? When was the Mayflower? Was there a date up there? The early 1600s. It was docked here. That blows my mind to think that the Mayflower docked right here. <laughs> Gosh. I did know that fun fact, but I kind of didn't really think about it, I forgot it. And when I saw that placard, it reminded me. Wow! That blows my mind to think that the Mayflower docked here. Brought fresh water on board. A cargo adjustment, I don't know what that means, I assume maybe some cargo shifted at sea, so maybe they had to um, put it back in place on board, maybe they took on more cargo. That, that blows my mind, the Mayflower docked here. Well these two boats have certainly seen better days, I don't think she's uh, fit for sea anymore. Can't see like the number anymore, it just says S. Is it a C or an O? I'm not sure what that says. I wonder if there's one on the other side. No, it's been torn off that side as well. I wonder how old. I wonder how old she is.
<laughs> like a life jacket in there. What's it say on the stern? Nothing. No name. Oh wait, what's this? CIFCAO04? Alright, I don't know what that means, but there she is. And right beside it is this rotting relic. There's actually a sign here that says danger, keep off. Um, and I would completely agree with that because she is in a terrible state. There's an old toilet down there. <laughs> That deck is all rotten. Again, I wonder how old this uh, boat is. wonder how much fish she caught back in the day. It's like a ladder there that goes down that hatch. I can't see a name on her. If you know the name, you know what to do. Let me know in the comments. Now this one, tied up, looks very seaworthy. As does the one behind it. Let's see if we can get a name. The Norwegian Blue from the Isles of Scilly. Well, it says Scilly on it, so I assume that's uh, her home port. Now this looks an older boat, but it's, it's still seaworthy. I need to watch my footing here because uh, I don't want to pay too much attention on the camera, then trip over all this and plonk down into the harbour. What's this one called? The Burgundy. Southampton. Wow, she's come a little bit of a way. All right. The outside wall of the old quay. And a couple of pigeons there just taking in the morning sun. Wow, still find this amazing. But if I was standing here, I don't know, 400 years ago, something like that. The Mayflower would have been docked here. I assume it was docked on the inside um, if they needed to do, like, uh, work. Or, you know, like, um, they had to bring on more water. I assume she would have been tied up here. That's if, of course, her draft... I don't know how deep her draft was. I don't know if she uh, was maybe too big a ship to tie up in the... along the quay. I don't know, maybe she was... maybe she was tied up on the outside, but... I don't know. I would have thought here. I don't think she would have had a very big uh, draft. She wasn't that big a ship. But anyway, either here or on the other side, or maybe just anchored in the harbour itself. The Mayflower. That, that blows my mind. Someone's dumped an old, like, cooker, like an old oven. Mariner, perhaps it came off of a... an old boat. Oh yeah, look, so presumably at sea, make sure your door stayed closed. 
that like little thing would uh, go across the door. There we go, someone's been cooking a can of coke. Great view there of the harbour mouth. So here's the old quay that I've just walked up and down. Check that out. Someone's drawn like a little shark face on the uh, front of this little boat. Oh, look at this anchor. There's no information stating what boat it came off and how old it is, but you can see how old and rusted out that old anchor is. Wow, I wonder what she came off of. Some more relics just lying here, another big anchor, look at that. With like a, like a cross mast maybe, I'm not sure what that is. But it's just like dumped on top of that huge anchor. Which doesn't look so rusted out, so... I mean it's old, but I don't know how old. Probably not as old as the other one, but... The Mayflower. Just down there. That is significant. Dolphin Court. I'm just looking at this caught my eye. Just uh, standing there in that little recess in the wall. Right, so we're walking toward the far end of Newlyn now. There's the road up there, so it's like a sunken pavement where these cottages are, these lovely little old fisher cottages. Former fishing cottages, probably just normal homes now for people. Very quaint. Rosebud Court. I think that was named after a, a little fishing boat called the Rosebud. And I believe that the Rosebud sailed up to London and up in through to the Thames to... It was some protest for something, but I, I can't think off the top of my head what it was about now. Right, so we're coming out of Newland now. And if memory serves... I'll find out in a minute. If memory serves, just off of the road, the main road, keep going down that way to Mausel, if you come down here, it leads down to a little rocky beach where I think we're going to end the video. Doing the taste test on the uh, Warren's pasty. Fun fact about a Warren's pasty: they're not actually made by Warrens anymore. They are. Um, whoa! Got very wet then. Um, they're made by a third party. Uh, that's based in Bodmin. So, who knew that about uh, Warren's Pasties? Yeah, there are definitely better pasties around. Warren's are okay. Uh, I, I would 
yeah, they're all right. Um, like I said earlier on in the video, I would consider Warren's an emergency pasty. If I was desperate for a pasty and I couldn't find a, like another bakery anywhere, yeah, I would I would buy a Warren's. I would eat a Warren's again, but they're definitely not my favourite. This is an emergency pasty. Oh, I need to stay hydrated. The uh, temperature is about 10.30 in the morning and we're already at uh, just shy of 80 degrees. So for the UK, it's quite warm. We're going to leave the video there. I do hope you enjoyed it. It was super fun exploring around Newlin. When you actually get out and look and, uh, and you see all the, the stuff that's there, the old buildings, I mean, there's loads of information and plaques around, very historic. I mean, historic as in the Mayflower stopped there in Newlin. That blows my mind. As always, thank you for watching. Give the video a big thumbs up. Do subscribe to The Bryce Side. It really does help the channel grow. Hit the notification bell and you'll never miss it on any video that we post. Excuse me, I had something in my throat then. <clears throat> we are on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Bryce Side. So check us out there. So from us to you, cheers and gone. A trip to Newlin wouldn't be complete without a Gelbert's ice cream. Yes.